Hey there. Thanks for joining us for Tales of Misadventure, a podcast all about business blunders. On this podcast, Nicole Donnelly, founder of DMG Digital, talks to entrepreneurs and learns how they turn their lemons into lemonade. DMG Digital is a full-service marketing agency focused on helping manufacturers attract new buyers through digital self-serve. Nicole Donnelly is a fourth-generation entrepreneur, a girl mom, and an avid traveler. Now, let's head into a tale of misadventure with your host, Nicole Donnelly. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Tales of Misadventure, where we talk about entrepreneurial blunders, mishaps, mistakes, and learn how entrepreneurs turn their lemons into lemonade. And I am so excited and delighted and ecstatic to have my really dear friend, and business associate Kurt Anderson on the show today. Kurt is a legend in e-commerce. He started an e-commerce floral company way back in the 90s before Google even existed. He had the vision to see that the way people were going to be purchasing was going to be changing. And he jumped on that bandwagon and never looked back. And eventually his business made it to the top 1,000 e-commerce companies three years running. He eventually sold that business to his business partner and now is the founder of B2B Tail, which is an e-commerce SEO consulting company for uh, manufacturers. And Kurt, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. How are you this morning? Nicole, good morning. What an absolute honor and privilege it is to be with you. I'm just, I'm like overwhelmed right now. So just, this is going to be great. I'm just honored and what a privilege. Thank you. You're welcome. This is such an exciting moment for me because you are my very first podcast guest. This is a very terrifying and exciting step forward. And you like having you as my first guest is like uh, a a warm cup of hot chocolate with a warm blanket. I I feel like there's no one better that I could be doing this with. So, Well, thank you. Right back at you. Yes. So, okay. So my first question for you is, you know, on this show, we really want to focus a lot on entrepreneurship and it is such an exciting, challenging, but also difficult pathway. And so we want to talk a lot about failures and missteps and and all of that. But first I want to like learn a little bit more about your background. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur when you were a little boy? Did you, did you want to, did you dream of owning a business one day? What was, what was it like when you were a little boy? Is that something you always wanted or what was your dream? Great question. I remember. So I'm so unfortunately, Nicole, I don't know if you realize, and this might be a little spoiler alert here. Like I'm, I'm not a young guy anymore, you know? So, so <laughs> I was young a long, long time ago. And like the word entrepreneur wasn't like a super popular word. And I remember, uh, my, my dad had a, a business and, uh, my, his secretary asked me one time was like, you know, Hey, you know, when you get older, you know, what do you want to be? And I'm like, I want to be an entrepreneur. And she was like, what is that? <laughs> So, uh, you know, I always knew that I just had like a a heart and a hunger, uh, trying to understand business. I was like, just fascinated. I'm a big history buff. And so just was obsessed with like, you know, the JP Morgans and Henry Ford and just, you know, the early icons that, you know, a lot of the, uh, capitalists that built America, if you will. And so, yes, I've always been a business, uh, business guy at heart. Very good. Well, tell me who is your, like your, your, um, of those icons that you just mentioned, who's your favorite? Who do you love the most? Who do you really look up to the most? Boy, that's a that's a load. Of, that's a great question. I mean, there's so many. You know, you look at generations. And I almost feel like you know you have like late, uh, you know, 19th century, like late 1800s, and then you know, of course, like with the tech revolution, you have like you know uh, Steve Jobs and you know Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. Um, you know, I love, I like Rockefeller. I know, you know, like oh. he was a fascinating, fascinating character. Uh, I'm a huge, huge Henry Ford fan, you know, didn't agree with that. You know, some of, you know, he, he got a little goofy, you know, but Rockefeller was, um, a guy deep in faith. He would teach Sunday school every mm-hmm. single Sunday and, mm-hmm. you know, just, uh, just a brilliant, brilliant guy. You know, I felt, you know, uh, had good, uh, personal, uh, standards, morals, if you will, maybe some people have written books or wouldn't agree with that, but he built a dynamic, you know, powerhouse and just found it fat. And he started at like 22 years old and it was just, he's, it's a fascinating, he's a fascinating character. Mm, you know, I'm going to have to read about him. I love that. I think there's a lot of ways that you can choose to run your business. You know, you can choose to run your business using, you know, with a lot of integrity, if you will. And you can choose not to. And I think that's that's really cool that you really looked up to him in that way and that you 
want to build and create a business in that in that same vein. So very cool. So my next question for you, Kurt, is what is something surprising that most people wouldn't know about you? Something surprising that uh, people don't know about me. What, you know, uh, I have a dog. I'm a big dog lover. I know maybe a lot of people know that, but I'm a huge, huge dog fanatic. And so that's, um, I'm, I'm a big dog guy. How's that for an answer? I don't know. Some people. Big dog. Know. Okay. So what is your dog's name? Theodore named after Theodore Roosevelt and, uh, we call him uh-huh. Theo. And so he's my, he's my buddy. And so, and I'm just, I'm a dog fanatic when I'm out, you know, love the neighborhood dogs and anywhere I go. So I'm just, I'm a big dog lover. How's that? Very cool. Theodore Roosevelt. That's a great name. What a great, uh, man, he was a great president, wasn't he? He was. He was pretty incredible. Yes, he was. Very cool. Well, let's talk, let's, let's go into it. I want to learn about when, you know, some you've, you've, man, you've been an entrepreneur now for how many years? Like over 30 years. Uh, in some, 30, yeah. Right? 30, 30. And you've, 30. how many businesses have you owned? How many, how many, how many businesses have uh, yeah. succeeded might be a better question. Because- <laughs> I know your, your, your topic is your topic. And I know why I'm your first guest. Cause you're like, well, who do I know that failed the most? And so like, Hey, I'm going to reach out to my buddy, and- Kurt. So I had, I had, if you looked at like every little like sole proprietor and everything that I've, you know, uh, there have been a lot, you know, so, um, I'm, you know, a lot of people love that label of serial entrepreneur. I'm the total complete opposite. I'm not a fan of that word or phrase. Interesting. I've, okay. Uh, I've just, you know, I've tried a thousand things. I, you know what, since we're on the history thing, you know, going back, I, you know, like Thomas Edison it was famous for saying what 10, you know, I, I figured out 10,000 ways not to do a light bulb. Right. Well, man, I'm like way past Thomas Edison. I've figured out tens <laughs> of thousands of ways how not to do it. I just, I just haven't created the light bulb yet, Nicole. So, um, oh, but you got to give yourself some credit. You built a hugely successful business, hugely. Yeah. So, so you know, it takes, uh, you know, it takes tenacity. I think um, I'll use, just speaking for myself, a lot of stupidity, uh, just relentlessness, just, you know, not knowing any better. And so just, you know, just keep, you know, you get knocked down, you get knocked down, you get knocked down and you just, you know, keep uh, plowing forward. So I've, I've had numerous little tiny businesses that didn't quite make it or survived, or maybe they blended into, you know, something else. And so, um, yeah, so I had a, a wholesale floral business and that evolved into an e-commerce business. And, and that finally, I finally found something that did okay. Yeah. But I, you know, I think that's one of the things that I've really seen in you that I think is really remarkable is you get knocked down, you get knocked down, but you have this tenacity to just keep on getting up, keep on getting up every time. And, um, Why do you think that is? What is it that has, why do you have that drive in you that when you get knocked down, you just, what is it? You know, I don't know. I know like different people are, you know, we were talking about Joe Rogan and you made me think of like, you know, Mike Tyson has a famous quote and I know there's a a famous football coach before your time. His name was Woody Hayes. They had both had similar quotes and it said something along the lines of like, everybody has a plan until you get a punched in the mouth, right? Everybody Mm -hmm. has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And so, you know, uh, you know, when you're in business and and I'm sure it's just in life, you know, you're an amazing mother, wife, uh, great family person, you know, and unfortunately, even like in our family or our best intentions, uh, we're, you know, things that you give back to the community. Sometimes, you know, something gets hits you in the face, right? You're like, I didn't see that Mm -hmm. coming. And so business is life. It's no different than anything else. And so, you know, but when you're running a business, it does, it's a lot more challenging. I've had the honor and privilege. I've gotten to know uh, like your team, your employees. I think, you Mm -hmm. know, my admiration for your leadership is just off the charts. I just love the culture and what you're building, but you know how challenging it is to really nurture folks to try to bring out the best in them to, uh, you know, and I think the big word is in in entrepreneurship is, you know, know, a theme that you and I have been talking about a lot this week is the word believe. Right. You put out a yes. great, amazing post. Uh, your father, you're a, a fourth generation entrepreneur. So you come from a long lineage. And so you've all you know is you've seen great entrepreneurs and that tenacity and you get knocked down and what it takes. And I think um, in my case, it was just like I just didn't know any better, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> do so but uh, i think believe i think that's a great word you put mm-hmm. out a great post about your father recently on linkedin it was just a very mm-hmm. heartfelt and such an inspiring as a girl dad like it literally brought me to tears and it was just such a mm-hmm. wonderful uh beautiful post but it was just about believing in yourself 
And when you believe in like the solution you're providing, the service that you're providing, and like, you know, you and I, uh, we take, we collaborate and work on a lot of clients together. Like, and I find, you know, you and I are, 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 what I want to say, like our culture, our values align because mm-hmm. like we're just trying to just, we're really, truly dedicated to, to helping our clients do and be better. Yes. And I think that like for me is that's what drives me every day to do what I do is just being able to have an impact. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think as entrepreneurs, you know, to, to go in and take the risk and start your own business, you you have to be doing it for something greater than just, you know, I want to make, you know, more money. There's really like every entrepreneur that I've ever known is doing it because they really want to create something bigger than themselves and they really want to help and have an impact. And I think that's what's always inspired me about the the people in my family that have owned businesses before me, my dad, my grandfather, my great grandfather. They just really wanted to have an impact. They wanted to make a difference in the lives, not only of their clients, but also their team, you know, their employees. And I saw that firsthand. I saw, you know, the difference that that what my dad built made in the lives of the people that worked for him, you know, the joy that it brought to them to be able to have a livelihood, to have something that brought them purpose and meaning, you know, I think that was a huge something that was I loved watching and seeing. And, you know, with my grandfather, he owned a uh, hotel right across from Disneyland that I actually worked. It was my first job out of high school. Loved that job. It was so fun. I got to meet people from all over the world. And I just loved seeing the joy in people's faces when they would walk in, knowing that they were going to be on this like trip of a lifetime. And knowing that my grandfather created that experience for like he's a part of creating that, like right. that's inspiring to me. That's exciting. So that's what I love about what we're doing every day is we're really trying to help manufacturers and clients really make their customers' lives better and easier and help them succeed. And it's it's super exciting. So so let's I, I can't let this go. We, let's go Uh-oh. real quick. Your grandfather's hotel. So a great word that kind of ties in with the theme of our conversation. What was the name of your grandfather's hotel, by the way? Oh, yes. His hotel was the Saga Inn. And uh, yes, that, and that was what it was when I worked wor- worked there, the Saga Inn. And he had this, I will tell you, he had the, the what do you call it? The mascot of the logo? I don't know. Yeah. It was a it was actually a knight in shining armor sitting on a, on a horse. Yeah. And my grandfather had a fascination with like any like German history because he that's that was his ancestry. Yeah. So he had, he had, I remember when I was a kid, I'd go to his house. He had this beautiful house in Orange County, Orange Park Acres, California. Okay. Beautiful. It was a Spanish, you know, beautiful house with courtyard pool. He was a big tennis guy. So like going to grandpa's house as a kid was like, it was literally, it was like going to Disneyland. It was right. awesome. We, we, we'd swim in the pool. We'd play tennis. We'd anyway. So the, he had a cool house. So you walk in the door of his house and he had this awesome, like full blown, like knight in shining armor, just like right there in the foyer. And I just like, I remember as a kid just thinking, this is cool. Yeah. You know, like he, yeah. you know, you see that with a lot of entrepreneurs. They're just larger than life and they just have these big, audacious dreams. And it just, it makes the world go around. It's so fun. It's so cool. Well, I think and the name is perfect because, you know, uh, as you know, like, you know, we've been talking about this heavy, you know, the word saga. And when you can create that yeah. business, you know, like in, you know, uh, sort of go cliche, but, you know, like the famous Simon Sinek, you know, Ted talk mm-hmm. about, you know, knowing your why. And it's just it is just so true. And the more that you're dedicated to your why and your understanding of what you do and why you do it and how you help people. You know, so like your grandfather, I mean, like it wasn't, you know, ah, the, it's a roof and like it's somewhere for people to, you know, to sleep for the night. No, like he, he was providing lifetime memories. People saved yeah. up for years, probably like saved their nickels and quarters. And, yes. you know, back in the day to like go to Disneyland, people coming in from all over the country, literally all over the world to have this amazing chance of a lifetime experience. And so, you know, to your grandfather, you know, like, oh, hey, I need a, somebody needs to clean the bedroom and, you know, we need a maid service or we need this or some of the headaches with the customers. But look at the, the dreams that were fulfilled and just a lifetime of memories that were provided for with this a simple facility. It's not a facility. It was a dream. He's a dream mm-hmm. maker, you know. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just, you know, and so the thing is, I don't care, you know, what you do for a living, you know, you could you know, you can, when you turn that into your why I had my floral business, you know, a hundred years ago and people like, you know, 
oh, floral business. What's up with that? And I'm like, you know what? For It's such an honor. When you think about like the products I sold, I was invited to hundreds, probably thousands of individuals, their weddings. It was always a celebration. There was a child that was born. There was a loved one that was lost and it could have been a tragic situation. It could have been grandma, it could have been, you know, another tragic situation. But there was an emotion with every single product that we sold. It was either a wedding, a birth, a birthday, love, romance, Valentine's, you know, and I'm like, it is such a privilege for me to be invited by providing these products to these lifetime wonderful whether it was romantic or a family member, uh, you know, so that was our why, like we are participating in somebody's celebration, happy or sad, but we've got to do our best to be there. So, I mean, I think when you understand your why it just, man, you can just really, you're, you're unstoppable, right? Yeah. I think, oh, I love that. It's so true. And I think as entrepreneurs, that's so important for you to always keep in the forefront is having that larger why, because when you do get knocked down, that's what's yes. going to pull you back up again. Yeah. You know, if you don't have like this greater purpose that you're trying to build, be part of, then you're, it's going to be so easy for you to quit. But I think like that's what really is what gets you up again and again when you get knocked down because you get knocked down a lot when you own a business. <laughs> like it is like a daily <laughs> occurrence, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a roller coaster. It yeah. is absolutely a roller coaster. Yeah. And I know you can talk about that. So I would love to hear Kurt, like, Tell us, I want to hear a story. I want you to tell us a story mm -hmm. about a real life story about a day in the life of Kurt. What was one of the biggest blunders mm. in your storied history that you could tell us? Walk us down that path. Tell us, let's story time with Kurt Anderson. Open up the book and yeah. walk us down like what went wrong and and tell us what happened. Man, I, it could be a long list, but I know we, we've got to be mindful of time, Nicole. So I'll, 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 I'll throw this one at you. So 1995, I had a wholesale business. I was young, ambitious. I was in my 20s. And so when I was uh, with this business, I was trying to open up uh, other locations. Okay. And so I'd opened up a second location and, and it was about an hour and a half from where I live. And so, you know, it was going it was going well for a while. And, you know, the, the excitement, the adrenaline, the honeymoon. Well, then all of a sudden, like I'm going back and forth between two locations and like, you know, in the beginning, like our sales exploded. I'm like, this is great. And then all of a sudden, like eight, 10 months into it, sales were starting to level off. But uh, but I kind of like I didn't quite double, but I vastly increased my expenses. I'm like just running crazy, trying to manage two facilities. And so now over time, what I had done is I created two two bad situations. So like I lost, you know, I lost sight of like my foundation, my home base. And then mm -hmm. my, my new thing with like the honeymoon was wearing off. And so I had at that time, I had a different business partner. I know we we're going to maybe talk about partners. So I just amazing. I've been very blessed throughout my career. I know this doesn't happen common. I've had like probably, I think seven business partners in my, in over my career. And I've just been blessed with every single, you know, they were great. And this gentleman in particular, we had this other location and, and I'm like, dude, we need to have a, a hard conversation. I don't think we're making it. And we're like, okay, well, what if we close in a few months from now? And then we're like, well, you know, maybe we should close in a few weeks. But at the end of that conversation, we closed that day. Oh my gosh. We, we had a we had a van. We called one of our employees. We got another van. Like we literally packed up that day. I have a picture of myself and, and, and my partner in front of the facility. And like we are ecstatic because like I got this burden off my back, right? So yeah. I got the second location off my back. But when I got done, I'm I I'm like, okay, well, that was my, that was my growth plan. That was my and I got punched in the mm -hmm. face. So what what's I what, I don't have plan B. And I'm sitting mm -hmm. there and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And I'm running out of options. And in 1995, I don't know, you're probably tiny, you're a little girl. These little discs were coming out for America Online to get people around the country on the internet. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I'm out of sheer, sheer desperation. I'm like, I'm running out of options. My accountant, I, you know this story. My accountant said I was the biggest disaster. I was the biggest train wreck <laughs> we'd ever met. And... <laughs> I put the business online out of sheer, like, I don't know what else to do. And uh, fast forward many years later, it, it worked out. But by close, by by the failure of that second location and closing it and out of lack of options, where all my energy was going into those two locations, had I maintained those two locations or if I would have closed the other one and, make, kept, and maintained, you know, whatever, 
I might not have ever gone online or jumped into e-commerce. So that failure opened the door for e-commerce for me. I love that. You know what I love about it? it I think it highlights a couple a couple things. One, resourcefulness. I think as entrepreneurs, like resourcefulness is a huge superpower. And in that story, what I heard is you had constraints, right? Like you couldn't keep the second business or a location. You couldn't keep the second location open because you're, you basically you were losing more money than you were making, right? And so faced with that constraint, you had to get creative. You had to say, okay, well, how am I going to make this work in the situation? And that is like, that is like resourcefulness to a T. And I think as, as entrepreneurs, resourcefulness, I think is underrated. Like it is what makes you successful to be able to pivot when you need to pivot quickly. Like the fact that you made that decision like so quickly and moved on it is a remarkable testament to like what a great entrepreneur that you have, that you are, what a great entrepreneur that you are, because you were, you have to be able to make those quick calls sometimes and you can't sit on it and you have to be able to make those quick decisions. Yeah. And I think as, as entrepreneurs, decision-making is a huge, huge part of your everyday. And I feel it like you get decision fatigue all the time, decision you know, fatigue. all the time. My gosh. And like the other day, my daughter, she's in this phase right now where all she wants to do is ask questions 24 yeah. seven. I, I mean, I, I, I have like, I can't believe it. The other day she just goes down the list and from one mom, what is juvie? Where do adults go when they break the law? You know, like I couldn't believe the question she's asking me. And after a while, you know, as an entrepreneur, we just have such decision fatigue. I was like, I can't answer any <laughs> more questions. I was like, mommy needs a question break. Okay. Question <laughs> so, break. I love it. Question fatigue and question break. You just taught me two new yes. terms today. Love it. Exactly. Yeah. But I think like what that shows shows entrepreneurs is resourcefulness. You have to be able to look at the product because there is no business that has no constraints. Every business has constraints. Right. Every business you have to figure out how to deal with not not a lot in some some capacity. And so you have to be able to get scrappy. You got to get scrappy and figure out how you're going to make it work. So I love that story. That's so cool. And look what happened from it, man. You grew this like multi-million dollar business from that one decision. Imagine if you wouldn't have done that. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember that America Online. You You've remember those mail. little? <laughs> You've got mail. I was. I'm not. I'm not that young. I I remember America. You remember Online. those? Okay, good. Yeah, you're yeah. like kindergarten. Yeah, I was. Let's see, 1995. I was 14 years old. I was a freshman in college. Wow. Freshman that in college? Feels, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, man, you are smart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just teasing. I was a freshman in high school. Your advanced class. So anyway, very cool. Well, you know, you mentioned partnership. So I'd love to talk about that a little bit because I think partnership is kind of a mixed bag. I mean, mm. you you hear that like, what is it? Something like 70% of business partnerships fail. Mm. And there's a lot of like really terrible uh, stories out there of partnerships yeah. that have just gone south. And, you know, you talk to entrepreneurs that are like trying to extricate themselves from partnerships and it's always bad and ugly. And so I think like, I would love to hear from you. Like, what are some of the, you've been blessed with such great partnerships, but like, I'm sure it wasn't all roses. Well, and I don't know if they would, if they would agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not positive. We found those folks if, you know, and again, when I, you know, it was, and everybody was like in a different capacity. Uh, you know, there was uh, the gentleman was very passive, you know, just kind of a small investor. Like I, I had like in 1990, you know, like 30 some years ago, I was fresh out of college. Uh, uh -huh. you know, other people were more involved, other people I worked with. So um, I think my assessment now is there are so many blessings with a potential partnership when you find the right partner. And, and uh, you and I did a webinar this week with our dear mutual friend, Dan Bigger. And Dan was talking about like how he treats networking. It's almost like dating, you know? And so I hate to give like that romantic uh, uh, analogy, but a partnership in my a humble opinion or experience is really as hard, if not harder than marriage. I mean, it's really, mm -hmm. uh, I've been blessed, fortunate. I've been be, be married 25 years next year. And so, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, you have to comp, you know, like, compromise, sacrifice, uh, swallow pride. Uh, it takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of camaraderie. It takes teamwork. It, uh, we talked about the saga. It has to be, mm -hmm. you need to believe in the saga. And one thing, uh, you know, you've you, you, on your team now is one of a, a, a old teammate of mine, Leanne. And I don't know if she would remember this, but uh, you know, a phrase that I would try to say frequently was like, I don't care who's right as long as we're right as a team. 
you know, so mm-hmm. like, you know, how can you swallow that pride or, you know, your feelings get hurt, somebody has a different opinion or somebody doesn't see eye to eye or you disagree on things. But, you know, if you can be fighting for the common cause, the greater good. And, you know, like we talked about, like what's best for the customer here. And I found like when you have like a rock solid mission statement, you know, we could say, okay, well, you guys, wait, you want to do that idea, that suggestion, does that fit our mission? Does that fit our strategic plan? You know, and so I found when you have that laser focus, people that you can trust and you create that, com- that camaraderie. And last thing I'll share, uh, my wife and I went to a wedding. I don't know if I've ever told you the story. My wife and I went to a wedding before COVID. It was a relative of mine. Beautiful. It was down your way. It was in Virginia. It was in the uh, mountains oh. of Virginia. It was absolutely beautiful wedding. And the minister got up and he uh, did the, uh, you know, was performing the ceremony. And he said something that hit me like a lightning bolt. And I will never forget it. I actually, I put out like a big blog post about it. And he said, the key to a successful marriage is you out sacrifice your mate. Mm. And that hit me, I'll tell you, like a ton of bricks. And I was like, because I've, you always hear compromise, compromise. Well, I'll do this, you do that. I'll do the dishwasher, you cook, you know, like whatever, you know, whatever. It's always a compromise. He said, if you just unconditionally out sacrifice your mate, if you just commit to out sacrificing your mate, you're going to have a thriving marriage. And I took that, I'm like, man, if you brought that mentality, that mindset to business, you know, to the point where like, you know, you know, you're not giving up your values or you're not giving up, you know, your idea, you know, like, you know, without taking it to an extreme where you're compromising your own personal, you know, values Mm -hmm. and what have you. But boy, if you out sacrifice others, what a, what a great mission that is. And so I think if anybody out there is talking about a partnership, think about if, if does, is, does, is this other person as committed to out sacrificing each other? That's a great partnership. Ah, oh, that's such a cool man. I'm going to steal your phrase. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. <laughs> this mic. I, I, I. This is my first time using a mic, by the way. So. <laughs> and that is a beautiful I'm, mic, by the way. I'm. I have mic envy. By the way, Nicole, I don't know if I told you that I have I have severe mic envy right now because mine <laughs> is like the it's 1999, you know. Yeti. Where, yeah, I'm scrappy, as you know. You got like this beautiful, like you're showing off your Lamborghini right now, right? Well, you want to know what's funny about this mic? This mic has been sitting in my closet for probably over two years. <laughs> I bought this mic for a client project. No joke. I bought this mic for a client project and literally sent it to my client because they were going to be doing this webinar series. And I was like let's make it super professional. I'm going to send you this mic. And so I sent it to them and it's been sitting in my closet. I've never used it until now. So now I'm taking it out of hibernation. Nice. We're doing this. So, but man, Kurt, that is such an incredible story. And I will just have to say, you know, you and I've had the wonderful, wonderful, it's just been a wonderful experience getting to work with you over the past year. And I can tell you from like all the times that we've worked together, you absolutely exemplify and live that mantra to, to out sacrifice your, your partner. I, I see that all the time from the first time I met you. Um, you were just incredibly generous with me to the point where like I got off the first phone call that we ever had. And I literally had never met or known anyone who was just so incredibly generous in, in the way that you were by like offering to have me come on your LinkedIn live show. And so I, I can, I can absolutely, um, tell you that that what you just shared is something that I know you live and breathe every day because I've experienced it for myself. And it, I think um, that's really such great advice for anybody who's looking to go into partnership. It's almost like you're a glutton for punishment, Kurt, you know, because partnership is not an easy, like to, to, to like you, you do, you have to compromise and sacrifice. Whereas if you just go solo, it's like, you, you know, you have a lot more control and power, I guess, yeah. over the decision making. But there's also a lot of benefits to having a partner um, aside from the the downsides. But anyway, well, that is awesome. So, OK, so I just could keep asking you questions all day long. This is so much fun. OK, so we only have a few more minutes and I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about marketing because you and I are both big marketers. We love helping businesses attract more buyers. You love to say, you know, one of your favorite phrases is stop being the best kept secret and niche down till it hurts, you know, and I'm super passionate about digital self-serve, helping customers 
get out there and create an amazing experience online for their customers. And, you know, these manufacturers out there, they, you know, a lot of them need a lot of help there so that they can compete against the big Goliaths. So I know that's something that drives both of us. But tell me a little bit about like marketing. How have you, you've, you've, you've had a lot of businesses. How have you marketed your business in the past and what's worked and what hasn't? Boy, that's a great question. So, you know, in a theme, you know, since like the theme with your program, you know, kind of going back in time, uh, whether, you know, wouldn't necessarily call them failures, but back in, uh, you know, in the 2000s, when I was, I had Leanne, who's on your team now, and e-commerce business, you know, I had a mantra then of when something new came out, I never wanted the competition to beat me at something new that I, that I was intentionally ignoring. And so when YouTube came out, in 2006, like we literally immediately started posting videos and you can go on YouTube right now and you'll find like these old, you know, like these videos from 2006. So, you know, however many years ago that is right now, you know, almost 17 years ago. And we were posting videos and like those videos today have literally like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views of what we did in 2006. There's this new social media thing, and I don't, I don't even know if we were using social media as a term back then, but there's this new uh, website that came out, and I was an ink mag- I'm an Ink Magazine junkie, um, mm-hmm. had the honor and privilege. I interviewed the editor-in-chief of Ink Magazine this past year, wow. and I would read that religiously, and so I, I always felt compelled to stay on top of like what's the new and latest greatest. This new website was coming out, and it was this thing like you, you would post, you would type 140 characters the type about like life and what you're doing. And I'm like, that website is never going to fly at all. And it was Twitter. And I was like, I, I like, I'm on the record saying like, I never felt I'm like, that is a total, like, I'm Hey, look at me. I'm at a coffee shop, but we went on Twitter, you know, like, so the thing is like when Pinterest came out, so like when anytime a new platform came out, I, especially, you know, you know, I'm scrappy, which means I'm super cheap. They were, they're all free. Yeah. So like when LinkedIn came out, you know, like every time a new platform came out, I wanted to embrace, I want to at least try it because I didn't want to be beaten. I'm not saying I was good at it. I, as a matter of fact, I, I could tell you, you know, you know, I tried creating my own little social media site. That was a total colossal, <laughs> you know, dud failure in itself. But the thing is, you know, and uh, I don't know as if I'm as good as that today. Uh, you know, you know, a few things that, that, you know, you're encouraging me to get on and I've pushed back on, but, you know, I think I encourage my, my point with this diatribe is for marketing is have an open mind, man, just do yourself a favor, have an open mind. And if you start feeling overwhelmed where there's just too much, boy, pick one and go all in, you know, my, and I'm going to say this on your podcast, The greatest blessing business-wise this year was you, was Nicole Donnelly, hands down, Mm -hmm. bar none, without, I don't know if I have a close second, but it was just such a blessing, you know, and and if it weren't for LinkedIn, I don't have a relationship with you. You're interviewing my buddy, my partner in crime, my co-host, Damon Postoka. I wouldn't have a relationship with Damon. I've been to his house multiple times. I've hung out with him and his wife. You and I have met in person, you know, without LinkedIn, we wouldn't have these relationships. I, if whoever's out there listening, man, I just implore you, invite you, beg you, grab a, grab a platform and just give it your all. That, that's my piece of advice right there. Man, Kurt, you're getting me all verklempt over here. (laughs) (laughs) You know how sappy I could be. It doesn't take much to make me cry. That's for sure. Sappy and scrappy, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's our, that might be our tagline, sappy and scrappy. (laughs) I love it. <laughs> but you know what? Oh, I'm, I'm over 50. So like I get like, like all of a sudden you, when guys get over 50, also like they're really sappy too. So I'm sappy half the time. So we're both sappy. I'm scrappy. So well, it probably like, it's because you're a girl dad. My husband is a girl dad to two girls. And I'm telling you, he never like, he's like the most reserved, you know, introverted yeah. guy. And you know, it, he like his girls can get him to cry at the drop of a hat oh, over. Yeah. Like, Man, I'd thing, never so. like my twenties and thirties, I was like a rock. And now all of a sudden fifties, I'm like, I'll see a commercial that like, like Oh my God, <laughs> look at that commercial. You know? I'm just, I'm, oh <laughs> man. Yeah. But that's such great advice about going all in on one platform. And I think that's, you know, marketing can be really comp it's, it's become more and more complicated over time. Oh, it's just God. there's so many more channels that you have to follow and keep up on. And it, as as people who are, you know, experts in the uh, not experts, you know, but we're in this industry, not, you yeah. know, we're, we're, you know, but 
there's just so much to keep on on top of. And I think for small businesses who are trying to be scrappy, you're absolutely right. If you try to spread yourself too thin and try to tackle too many of these platforms and channels at once, you're just setting yourself up to to to, to be mediocre, frankly. But if you can really just like focus in, like you said, on one platform, really understand it really well and and just go all in on it, you're absolutely right. You can that's where you're gonna start getting traction. And then once you get really, you know, once you have some experience and you're starting to get some results and, you know, business and customers through that channel, then you can branch out and try the other channels. So I think you're 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 right on there. I think that's really, really great advice. Okay. So, you know, our podcast is all about misadventures and business and making mistakes and blunders. But, you know, I think one of the questions I have for you, Kurt, is what can we do to make the pain of those mistakes less? What can we do to so that we're setting ourselves to maybe not make these huge catastrophic mistakes? What can we, what, what kind of preventative measures can entrepreneurs do, try to make, because we're going to all make mistakes. We right. have to accept it, embrace it. Right. So what can entrepreneurs do? What's your advice on what they can do to kind of like keep those blunders from being like truly disastrous? Phenomenal question, Nicole. My, I, I, I have two two suggestions. So number one, another tagline I used to say back in my e-commerce days when I had my business was, what are we doing today that six months from now we're going to be laughing at? Like what inefficiency are we doing today that like, like, you know, you know, those situations where like, oh my God, Kurt, can you believe when I met you, you were doing this, you know, and like, you know, how do you get past those? Okay. If you can be open-minded and embrace change, number one, I I just, boy, just be open-minded, you know, um, you know, I shared a story with you, you know, when I, when the words came out of my mouth, this is how I've always done it. I knew like I was in trouble, Right. So I, I encourage, invite, welcome people, have that open mind and think about what are you doing today that's just so horribly inefficient that you're going to make fun of it six months from now, but how, but boy, not six years from now, make that change as fast as possible, right? The second mm-hmm. piece of advice is, man, get a village. It takes a village mm-hmm. to raise your business. You are not alone as entrepreneurs. We feel, you know, we're, it's lonely. You feel like you're in a silo. If your significant other is, uh, you know, in corporate or civil servant or whatever, a lot of people don't understand what, it, what you're going mm-hmm. through as an entrepreneur. Reach out to your small business development center, the SBDCs. If you're in manufacturing, Nicole, you, you and I do a ton of work with the MEPs, Manufacturing Extension Partnerships. Mm-hmm. Get on LinkedIn and and boy, join a community. Get involved. Get your support system. And uh, we'll I could close out with this. Your one of your favorite words is. In fact, our LinkedIn live show today is about empathy. You love that word empathy. Boy, have the humility to ask because people have the empathy to help. Have the humility to ask. There are tons of people that have the empathy to help you. You're not alone. And just be, just march forward. That is such great advice. I love that. Don't be afraid to ask for help because you're right. We do want to help. And you're right. We need a community. And I will say that like me um, getting active on LinkedIn earlier this, this last year, absolutely. I was able to find my tribe of people and it is hands down made such a huge difference in my business. Having that support of the people around you is inspiring. It's motivating. It helps you rise higher. And then when you can rise higher because you have the support of those people around around you, what's that phrase that you always say? Raises all ships. What's yeah. Rising phrase? tides, raising all rising ships. Rising tides, raise all ships. And just yes. think, Nicole, just look at, look at how it's changed your life. Mm-hmm. Look at, we went to a conference together, an industrial marketing conference in Cleveland. And look at the people that we met, that we associated with. Just, yes. Like, Mind blowing, right? You and I did a huge project together in Texas. Just the energy, the camaraderie, and what how that's going to change that business. You've gone to New yeah. Jersey to meet, you know, Julie and John Baglino, and just you know, look at these relationships that you've built, and and you know, one of your uh, contractors, uh, Amy, you know, people that you you've met, Leanne in person. But just look what, and had you not had the courage to raise your hand and to get on LinkedIn. None of those, none of those events would have occurred. None of those relationships, none of those business opportunities. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's great. You know, boy, you met these people or you did this or, what, you know, social. No, like you're driving business on top of amazing relationships. So, I mean, look at how this changed your life by just 
raising your hand and getting on LinkedIn. Absolutely. I'm, I, man, I, I, I just can't say enough about that. And you have to do it scared as entrepreneurs. The fear is never going to go away. You're always going to be afraid of something, right. <laughs> you know, you are, there's uncertainty. It's never goes away. And I think as entrepreneurs, you have to embrace it. You have to embrace the uncertainty. You have to get comfortable with the fact that you're going to be making decisions scared and you just have to go for it anyway, because there's never going to be a point where it's going to be me doing this podcast. I, this morning I got up for this podcast and I was like, what the heck am I doing? I have no idea how to do this. Right. <laughs> like, but I, and I, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it scared and it's, it's all going to work out and I'm going to have a great time and I'm going to meet, I'm going to. I've learned so much from this conversation that I can take to my business. And that is what I want to do. I want to be able to learn, grow so that I can help take that information to my clients and uh, just do a better job serving the people that I come in contact every day. So Kurt, this has been such an awesome first episode. Oh my gosh. I would just love to do this all day long. <laughs> Let's just like, why don't we quit our day jobs and we can just be like the next Joe Rogan. <laughs> Yeah, or like Kelly and uh, who's Kelly with now? I, the, they, the talk. Oh yeah, them. like Regis and Kathy Lee, yeah, Kelly Regis and whoever and she's Lee, got. Kelly and whoever Kelly was with, and you know, yes. Like, so get our own little talk show, but you know, to close out, I love what you just said, and our dear friend Allison DeFord always she always she's one of the funniest human beings I've ever met. She says, "Not fearless, but how do you fear less?" Oh. You know, she always puts fear less. And, you know, and I'm, I'm going to go here, like, you know, you and I are, are uh, big, deep in faith. And so like, you yes. know, just in having that belief in yourself is just, you know, that's going to help uh, all of us conquer these challenges, these fears, these, you know, stress, man. And we're not here for a long time, but we can certainly be here for a good time, Nicole. So have fun while you're at it. And so thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today. I'll tell you, you are such a blessing to me. I, I, speechless. Just you are one best thing that happened to me this year, business wise, personally was you and I crossing paths. And I just, I worship you, adore you, admire you, respect you, and just uh, thank you for everything. Oh, thank you. Right back at you, Kurt Anderson. Right back. Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork, Teamwork makes, the dream, makes work. the dream work. Thank you for being my very first guest and being such a huge cheerleader. I'm so grateful. And, um, yeah. Thanks so much. I hope we get to do this again sometime. This was fun. Absolutely. Best success right. with your podcast, Nicole. Thank you. All right. Thanks for listening. Tales of Misadventure is produced, edited, and moderated by Julie Bacello with Bacello Media. Music by Marcus Way. Special thanks to our amazing guests and the entire DMG Digital team. Visit us at dmgdigital.io to get access to all our podcast interviews and other helpful resources. And if you'd like to get updates on the latest and greatest, please sign up for our email newsletter. We'll see you next time for another episode of Tales of Misadventure. Until then, keep falling forward. <laughs>